Hi, good morning everybody. This is Nicholas Teo from CMC Markets here in Singapore. Uh, happy Monday morning. Um, a few things to actually watch out for this week. Uh, it's going to be quite an event heavy sort of week uh, uh, centered on the FOMC uh, decision on Thursday or rather Thursday early morning here. Um, now, while the hot money is actually on a, on a rate, uh, rate lift off in uh, September, uh, I mean, as traders, you know, uh, you are open to all sorts of possibilities that could happen. Uh, tonight, we will get some sort of indication where the industrial sector is concerned in the US, although that's not a key number in view of the consumption uh, led sort of uh, economy down there. But still, uh, a hot number like this uh, would definitely send. Uh, 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 well, fears or expectations that uh, a liftoff could come actually as soon as even you know uh, Thursday night. Uh, again, like I say, it's speculation. Uh, but because there's a decision, uh, everybody's going to be pivoted on that sort of a number this week. Um, further on in the week, I mean, we are seeing also still from Europe, uh, from the European front, uh, Greece continue to uh, to be in this game of brinkmanship. Uh, together with the Troika, uh, with this expected to continue and coming to a hit uh, as we hit deadlines towards the end of this month, uh, anything could happen down there further that could send you know prices uh, to either side. Uh, but anyway, just let's look at some some of the stocks that uh, that uh, we have featured today. Uh, a stock that I'm keen to talk about this morning is actually Hong Kong Exchange, uh, and I'm using this as a proxy of what has actually happened in the, the Hong Kong China markets. Uh, in terms of that huge move that we can see reflected you know, on the charts down here. Uh, this is obviously as a result of uh, the opening up of the Chinese markets and how a company like Hong Kong Exchange will probably benefit from the fund flow either side. Uh, now from a chart point of view, if you were to just throw in some uh, draw tools for example, uh, looking at the channel down here, that channel has more or less been established very nicely since uh, the beginning of April. Uh, but something that I look out for consistently is something I call a three thrust reversal. Uh, the three thrust reversal basically works like this. Uh, in all these occasions, here, here, and here, the index or the stock in this case uh, has managed to just mo go above the previous high. In this case, this previous high, I mean, this high, a new high down here over this previous high and this high here over this previous high but immediately sinking back down and close to coming back uh, into into this this range as I highlighted down here uh, and it clearly shows that this rally is actually um, uh, uh, smoothing out or flattening out uh, you can also argue that because of this huge move this consolidation phase is actually very healthy yes Either way, you are. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's fair to look at that. Uh, but for this stock to move out of this range, either on the upside here or the downside down here, I think you're going to see a big move next. Uh, it's too early to speculate whether it's going to break down or it's going to move up. But I think there's enough legs uh, or enough of a pattern down here to show a potential setup that could happen or bring a much higher price or much lower price. Uh, now, if you were to look at the fundamental for this stock. Uh, for example, if I pull out Morningstar Research down here, uh, you're seeing that the stock is now trading at around uh, 65 times PE, forward PE or estimate of around 40 times. Uh, what this means is that uh, it, it is still growing, but it's only growing at only about a 30% uh, expected rate uh, in terms of uh, earnings growth this year over last year or rather next year over this year. Uh, but it's still, even then, with the forecasted growth, it's still trading at around 40 times PE, which is by no means cheap. This stock is up roughly 60-70%, 70% year to date, from since the beginning of this year that we see down here. Uh, and uh, the, 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 the thing is that uh, with any shocks to, say, China, for example, and the rally that we've seen in the bull market in China, uh, this could be one of the more vulnerable stocks in Hong Kong, uh, from a more liquid point of view uh, that, that one can look at uh, on the downside. Uh, I mean, besides that, uh, I'm still looking at what's happening in Hong Kong, uh, the Hong Kong 43 cash. Uh, it's been actually really volatile last week and the volatility stemmed from a possible MERS outbreak into that island. Over the weekend, everything was calm. Uh, there was no new reports on Hong Kong MERS cases, uh, but Korea, uh, continues to actually report an increasing amount of case. Now, I'm not saying that this is going to blow up, but 
anything can happen and, and one should be obviously open to the news and the events uh, that will happen or that will follow. Uh, finally, a couple of technicalities. The next couple of weeks, we will see some volatility. As I uh, mentioned in my report this morning, please look out for it in the company's blog. Uh, we are seeing triple witching this weekend or this week on Friday. Uh, that sets up a volatility or phase of volatility for equities worldwide. The next thing is that we're going into the month end, quarter end and also semi-annual end. It's been a good first six months of this year. We may see some window dressing effects uh, as we lead into that date itself. Uh, whatever it is, look for drivers uh, that could trigger off a move either side. Uh, but besides that, thank you very much.